Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger. In this lecture, we will talk about what characterizes great places to look for fossil vertebrates. Now, this all has to do with the chance of burial by sediments. However, if the sediments are in a high energy system, such as a fast moving river, the chances of the bones being preserved are reduced than if the river was slow moving. High energy systems, such as beach deposits, coarse sands, uh, fast moving rivers with big conglomeratic units, big cobbles and gravel, and eolian winds are typically contain fewer fossils when compared to rock layers that form in much lower energy systems like lakes or ponds or slow moving meandering rivers. So rocks laid down by lakes, slow moving meandering rivers, ancient soil deposits called paleosoils or offshore marine environments all tend to have higher preservations of fossils than in high energy systems. Now there's a scale that was developed in the United States for how high the potential of finding fossils in a particular rock unit is. The scale is called the potential fossil yield classification or PFYC system for paleontological resources in the United States. And it was developed by the Forest Service, but it's also used by the Bureau of Land Management to categorize the chance of finding an important fossil from particular areas. The ranks go from one being, you're never gonna find any fossils in that rock unit, to five. Oh, it's gonna be the most spectacular rock unit ever. Tons of fossils will be found there. All right, so here's the definitions of each of the classes. A class one, very low, low chance you're gonna find fossils in this unit. So these are geological units that you're not gonna find anything. Um, they're units that are either igneous or metamorphic rocks. Um, this excludes reworked uh, volcanic ash, which could have fossils in it. Um, these are units that are pre-Cambrian or older, so they're older than the Phanerozoic, so you're not gonna get any, anything really exciting. You might get some microby uh, fossils, but not any big things. Um, this picture here is a, an example of a sort of a class one rock layer. This rock layer is composed of basalt, which is an igneous rock and it's devoid of fossils. All right, so let's look at um, class two. These are kind of low, low chances of finding fossils. These are sedimentary units that, you know, no one's really reported any fossils being found or there's not very many vertebrate fossils that we found here. Um, so no one's, no one's really talked about any fossils ever being found in the unit. A lot of times class use two um, is used for rocks that are really young, um, say only 10,000 years old, um, such as like kind of the dirt you find in your backyard. So usually those are kind of considered class two. Uh, includes like recent sand dunes, eolian deposits can be class two. Um, so these are um, also can be um, rock units have undergone some sort of chemical changes. Maybe they're evaporitic type deposits or something like that. So you're know, likely not to see any fossils in them. Here's an example of a class two rock layer. This is a Paleozoic sandstone unit, which was deposited in a high energy river system with no record of fossils having ever been found in it. A class three is moderate or kind of sometimes used for unknown rock units. Uh, these tend to be fossiliferous sedimentary units where fossils are found occasionally, um, but never in great abundance. Um, and it's difficult to predict where they are found. They're often used for marine shales um, where the chance of finding something like a mosasaur or a plesiosaur is kind of low, but they do occur sporadically. Um, vertebrate fossils are occasionally scientifically important, or you might have some class three uh, deposits that have some interesting plant fossils and invertebrate fossils, um, but they're not necessarily super fantastic. So sometimes uh, class threes are used for shales and marine units, 
like uh, limestones. Here is an example of a class three. It's a marine limestone unit which contains marine fossils but may lack fossil vertebrates. And here's another example of a class three. This is a marine shale uh, which may contain fossils but uh, they tend to be uh, more rare. All right, then we have class four. These are, the, are fairly high. Um, these are geological units containing a high occurrence of significant fossils. Um, vertebrate fossils or scientifically significant invertebrate or plant fossils are known to occur and have been documented and published on. Um, but they may vary in occurrence and predictability. Uh, most class four or higher rock units often trigger paleontological mitigation or monitoring of fossils on public lands in the United States. Um, and here's an example of, of what something like a class four rock layer would look like. Note that this is composed of fine grained mudstones that are red and white, which are ancient soil horizons. Uh, fossils, particularly terrestrial fossils, are likely high in this unit. And then we have class five, the very high probability of finding fossils. These are the highly fossiliferous geological units that consistently and predictably produce vertebrate fossils or scientifically significant invertebrate or plant fossils. Um, these units are exposed with little soil or vegetation cover. Um, and class five layers ah, will always trigger um, paleontological mitigation or monitoring of fossils on public lands in the United States, particularly like if a road is being built or there's some sort of subsurface construction uh, project going on, um, oftentimes they will hire paleontologists to salvage any fossils that are found as they go through the unit. An example of a class five is the famous Morrison Formation a Jurassic unit here in North America that produces uh, famous dinosaurs. Um, it's one of the most well-studied rock units in North America, and it's home to dinosaurs like Stegosaurus and Allosaurus. So it's a clear class five rock layer. All right, so you should now be able to appraise a uh, given geological formation and its characteristic lithology for its likelihood of preserving vertebrate fossils. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin Links are found in the descriptions below.